Hello, Caliber 3135, can you hear me okay? Hello, <laughs> can you guys hear me all right? Hi, Eric, can you hear me? Is the sound all right? Hello, hello, hello. Okay, you can hear me great. Okay, good. Thank you, Scott. Uh, hi, Howdy and Dan and uh, how's everyone doing? <laughs> I, I today is uh, what I wanted to talk about was I hey Forrest. Um, what I wanted to talk about is, is really a couple related things. And this has to do with, and I really need your opinions on this. Um, that is, is, is that the, where is the value in, in the watches that the, the person who makes the watch really had nothing to do with the design of the movement of the of the base movement uh at least anyway and sort of is there a continuum or or what is there and and what i wanted to start off with i wanted to start off with a couple of the watches uh that i have that somebody else did the movement in uh the first one is what i call my outlaw watch uh this is my um hey tom this is the See what is it? Uh, Maurice Lacroix, and it's got the uh, Jacques Brian. It's got the Jacques uh, seven thirty six in it. Okay. In other words, uh, in for the most part, um, or at least for a while, uh, Maurice Lacroix was using all these different movements, and then they would have some. They all they call them ML this and that. I forgot what the ML number was on this one. Uh, which was sort of, to me, crazy because the, the Jacques uh, 736 is really a cool movement. But there it is. Here you have somebody else made the movement. And I don't know what these things cost originally. I think they were about 6000 I think that was the, what the, the price was on it. Now, the other one I have that has somebody else's movement in it is my Harry Winston. Now, all Harry Winstons have somebody else's movement, and they have the uh, opus that they're very proud of. And um, so this, this one, uh, it, it is made of gold, and it has a uh, Gerard Perigo for the basic movement, and then it has an Azenhor, um retrograde by retrograde uh module in it okay so like agenhor is like uh genhor I, I i always say it wrong is like really good and, and in fact I, uh this is a watch that's never going to get sold by me anyway uh even though none of the movements in it are by the company with the name on it the harry winston okay now this watch um, was about. Oh, let's see. I was just looked it up. I think they went for between eighteen and twenty thousand new, and I saw one with diamonds on it, and it was like forty-eight thousand. So these things are not inexpensive, but you know when you look at you know how much expertise do you really have or do you really need uh, to get into the watch building business? with a movement that somebody else made all right now i've got a couple watches here this is um this is a watch i built it's got a um a bronze uh case to it which will it, it has a different patina that it uh, develops uh, over age and it has an eta 6498 movement um turn it this way uh, the small when the small seconds are at six o'clock rather than nine o'clock, 
that's the 98. If they're at 9 o'clock, that's the 97. Uh, here's another one that I'm just finishing up. I think I may have showed this one. Now, this one has got an enamel uh, dial on it, but it's a, um, it's a Chinese copy of a 6498 uh, called an ST36 something or other. Uh, I think it's a 3620. Okay, so here I've got some watches. Now, this one, I don't know, maybe about 170 bucks or something like that to, to make the whole thing. And it's the only watch I have with a, um, the only one I have left, <laughs> put it that way, with an enamel dial, which is sort of cool. Okay. Um, now, we're dealing with, you know, what we're, what we pay for if we if we have a, a really good move uh, a really good watch is we're paying for the uh the watchmaker's skill uh this one is got this incredible skill of marco wang in it and it's got a movement that uh, he designed and it has uh, on the back here i have on my little thing on on the back, it's got this uh, trigonal bridge, and you can see all of the movement. And it has this uh, gold and silver uh, covering on it, and it does all kinds of things like that. Okay, so now these, uh, this watch, and this watch were almost the same price. Uh, this one was a little more, uh, even though this one is made of gold, and this one's made of stainless steel. So it, it, it it's like. And the reason I'm bringing this up, um, I've been noticing on on some of the um, oh, what are they on uh, some of the Facebook pages and and including uh, the one that we have that we've set up the pretentious watchmakers are um, are the are the interesting ones. I, I mean, they're they brought some things in. I say okay. Uh, there are people showing, <laughs> they're trying to, they're going, <laughs> I think they really wanted to have them up for sale. They can put them anywhere they want to for sale. But I, I tell you, a, a site where you you have a bunch of people who are, you know, putting them together is, is a little different. Now, Eric, um, you mentioned the, um, yeah. Um, the technology elevates the watch when dealing with movements. This, I don't, it depends how you mean technology. The most expensive watches and the most valued watches are by top watchmakers. For example, if you can get a hold of a, um, a Dufour, a Philippe Dufour, you're not paying for the material that it's made out of and it doesn't matter whether it's made out of gold or silver or steel you you're paying for the simplicity or the duality movement the same is true uh with roger smith uh and carrie boot and Lonin. you're not paying for the technology i mean like the technology in in mechanical watchmaking the technology is like really i mean it only goes to a certain point uh i got my iphone over here and that technology is like on another planet compared to what we're dealing with as mechanical uh watch collectors okay so um this is sort of what i wanted to kick around is that you know where do we where does watchmaking come in uh, I don't consider myself a watchmaker. That's how come I named it the pretentious watchmakers to keep us reminded exactly what we are. And so, hi, DG. And, and so we're, what we're dealing with is we're dealing with what? Uh, and when does watchmaking come in other than sort of polishing it really nicely? And I can do that. <laughs> I can Where's my polishing cloth? Let me show you. This is my skills. Aha, there is, it's nicely finished now. Uh, and that's pretty much it. But some of the people that have 
been involved with the pretentious watchmakers. There's this one guy who went to uh, Amazon and got a bunch of polishes and stuff and just did this incredible job of finishing on it. On It was like a, I don't even think it was an ETA. I think it was an ETA clone. And the finishing on that thing was really amazing. And so I thought, well, you know, if we practice with, um, uh, so, you know, Dremel tools and so forth, this would be something. Okay, Caliber. Okay, you recently bought off Amazon a great book called Breguet, Art and Innovation and Watchmaking by Emmanuel Breguet and Martin Chapman. Oh, you bet I enjoy the book. There's the the book on, on Breguet that I, I'd really like to get. Uh, it's just like $200 or something. And I have to, uh, you know, that part that comes out of my watch money, so I have to be careful. It was by... Um, uh, George Daniels. Now, the interesting thing about that book, George Daniels wrote, has, this is his most popular book. It's called uh, Watchmaking. And I, I talked to a guy who is a real watchmaker. In fact, he was a former judge on the uh, Grand Prix d'Or Logie de Genève. And he was telling me, he said, he he's uses this book all the time. And it's to me as a book, it's terribly organized. <laughs> Here's a reference on page five, and this is figure 53. And so you go to, you have to dig out to the book to find it. I mean, as a book, it's not well organized, but the information in there and the skills and the techniques are just amazing. But F.P. Jorn, who considered himself a, a student of George Daniels. In fact, he dedicated a watch uh, that had to, from, uh, to my mentor, George Daniels. The book that he used was the, the one that Daniels did on Breguet. Um, and so this is Breguet. You can see that throughout everything that uh, F.P. Jorn has done, not only F.P. Jorn, but a lot of other uh, watchmakers. So, I mean, like, we're, not, we're, we're nowhere near that level. Uh, here, here's why. These guys are making their own movements. Uh, you take F.P. Jorn's, uh, the one that I have is called the Resonance. And I forgot the guy's name who, and who first brought it up in some clock that he made. But then he made the made the movement itself the people we're talking about they're buying the movement putting it in a case putting on a dial putting on the hands now whether they make the hands and the dials and so on and so forth um that sort of to me is is where the level goes up jej -E -J, how you doing um so what where do we you know where do we have that now one of the uh, comments that was on the other day uh, about the uh, thing I have about building a military watch, I had a picture of a guy's watch named Beast or somebody like that, a guy in L.A. who um, who uses or did use, I'm not sure, or he has, he developed his own movement, I think, at, at some point based on a 6497 or 98, one of those, one of those watches. Um yeah. Uh, hey, John, how you doing? Uh, the so, so so I guess what I'm asking is that you know uh, people have asked me, so, "Well, you know, are you going to sell your watches?" And the answer, I have no plans to do that. I just sort of going to make them. <laughs> That's the fun part. And then I'll have them around. The, the first one I did was one of the best ones, and again, it was another one with a um, uh, an enamel dial. I gave it away to a friend. So, I mean, this is sort of the way I see it. I talk to other guys who do it, and they have it, you know, they're, they're, they're long-suffering kids, get watches for birthdays, Christmas, everything else that uh, their uncle made. Okay. Um, now, uh, Eric, you bring up a good point about getting a really good movement. And uh, most of the stuff that I've been dealing with uh, is like... Okay, they're 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 pretty standard 
horology movements, uh, such as an ETA or a, a clone of an ETA, such as uh, the ones that Siegel makes and sells for 30 bucks on eBay. Okay. All right. Now, if you could get a uh, an El Primero uh, tegmented submerged steel case, I'd easily pay the cost of any IWC model. Well, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, if you want, uh, uh, what you're saying, if you can get an El Primero movement, um, if you, uh, but I, I don't think IWC uses El Primero movements. IWC has movements. They don't exactly tell you what's in there. And uh, then they have ones they make themselves. So IWC is not on my my happy list. So we'll put it that way. Okay, so, so, so let's go back to that. Um, uh, talking about these putting together, putting together a watch. All right, now, like I said, now, this one uses a, a good movement, a good solid movement in Gerard Pergo and a great one in that, uh, the Agahua. That's one, that's one level of watch. They make their own cases and, and some other things like that. But I mean, let's face it, Harry Winston is more of a watch uh, platform, okay? They have, every year they have this thing called the Opus uh, ones. And on the Opus ones, they, they invite a watchmaker to have his, Opus watch. Uh, the very first one was F.P. Jorn. F.P. Jorn had the resonance. I think it was a resonance that he put in there, uh, or or something like that. One of one of those. Then every year he has a. They they have a different watchmaker that does it. Okay. I.W.C. Da Vinci Retro Retropon is a great movement. Okay. Uh, D.B. D.G.B. Um, first of all, did I.W.C. Make the Da, Vin da Vinci uh, Rattrapon. Is that by them? But I know what a Rattrapon. Okay, split second perpetual uh, calendar. All right. Uh, did they did they do everything in that? Yes, no, or did they get it from someplace else? On on the uh, uh, on that on that particular movement. Yes, no. You're not sure. Okay. The point is the cost value is horrible when buying an IWC. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Probably not everything. <laughs> I don't know what they did. Now, uh, no, DGB, let me give you another example. Uh, if you know what that costs, uh, uh, please tell us. That, that would be interesting. Uh, on the other hand, there was the, the winner of the Petite Agui this year. Again, was harboring two with a doppel, and he used uh, uh, Richard Harboring used to work for IWC and help them develop that split second that you're talking about. So this this last couple of years, they came out with one with his own movement, the A11 that uh, that Harboring two has. Okay, so it's it's. Wow, 17k for uh, for that. Now, uh, Richard Hart brings is half that. It's about 8,000. And so here you have uh, and your the IWC you're not too sure about on the uh, on the Rector Pont, but I can tell you who do, who do, who did the Rector Pont High Deacon uh, is is Richard Harbring and this was about god, I don't know, 10 15 years ago, something like that. Anyway, okay, if a respectable movement in a watch with more advanced case designs, I'd be willing to pay more for a watch with more horological history. Okay, um, that's, that's, that's another thing. But one of the sort of a point, I guess, or a place I've come to, uh, to some extent, is that after, after making uh, a number of these watches, myself it's, it's not easy is not super easy that's how come i have the the military watch those are pretty straightforward 
and, and what we're going to do. Uh, the, the kinds of problems you can run into, you have to be careful. And if you run into a problem, a little watchmaking uh, background helps. And it's, what really helps is having somebody else that you're doing it with. And this is how, how come I hope to have it as a, as a group uh, endeavor that we could do. We could work on something, uh, not this particular one, but one that uh, the military. Now, I've already ordered my parts and one I already have, let me get it, is the movement, okay? Um, this is what the movement looks like, and I forgot what it was. It was 30, 40 bucks, something like that, right? Now, you, you, you're gonna, there are watches on the market that people charge you know, 10 times that amount for with this exact same movement. And then I, we got the case on order and uh, see what else, the dial and the hands. And that's it. And so we, we, we take the movement, we put it into the case, we put the dial on the, um, on the movement. It's on, this is the dial side right here. And, and, and that's pretty much it. Now, on the other hand, when, when, you know, when is it that somebody says, okay, well, they're doing the same thing. And they're charging you an arm and a leg for it, <laughs> you know. Why? I, 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 uh, that part doesn't make a lot of sense unless they have a really good movement. Um, one of the ones that seems to be going to other than Parmigiani that makes a good movement is Vacher. And so, if I had a Vacher movement, which I hope to, uh, what I what I'd like to do is to then make a, a watch that somebody goes out and they ask $20,000 for, but do it for like a fraction of that. Okay, so let's talk about our military watch. Okay, raise your hand if you're gonna be involved or you'd like to be involved in this military watch project, because that's gonna be fun. I don't have a military watch, unless you count my old Beauvais uh, uh, Mono Retro Pont as a one. Um, so you guys, uh, who's who wants to be involved in that? And uh, there was a, there's a whole list. We've had a number of people who've added. Um, there you go, Tom. <laughs> the there are a number of people who have uh, recently joined pretentious watchmakers. That would be cool. Okay, Aerotope, you're gonna lurk. That's fine. You know, I I mean, it, it's <laughs> Aerotope. You're gonna watch me screw something up. And then say, oh boy, I'm, I'm just looking for now. If it, if I get lucky, hi Neil. Uh, if if I get lucky, okay, I have ten vintage military watches. Oh, hey, well, Forrest, I tell you what, you can be an advisor then, <laughs> a military advisor. Either that or make one with us. Uh, hi, Amon, uh, John. Oh, great, you're going to be involved too. Uh, that's that's really good. Um, Wyvern, hello, 07, there you are. Uh, we, we've been talking about what it, what is involved in this. Anyway, we, we're switched over now to a bit. We're talking about the actual project of making this, uh, making a simple military watch. Okay, so this is where, I, this is what I've got. I've got, I've ordered the other stuff for it. Hey, Mustafa. I've ordered everything else for it. I've ordered the uh, the dial and the case. By the way, too, uh, I found and I put this on pretentious watchmakers' site. The hey, crappy, the uh, uh, and uh, I went from a forty-four to a forty-two millimeter. I I know that's not a lot, but uh, sort of like them a little smaller. Hi, Renee. Um, oh, oh, wow. Okay, you can you contacted the Concepto Movements factory in Swiss. I could order small qualities. Hope on good news. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, uh, Renee, what kind of movements uh, does Concepto have? Okay, how do you define a military watch? Well, right now, whatever <laughs> whatever force cop says it is, a military watch has. Uh, there's certain kinds of dials that they have. It's it's pretty much a watch that 
has the look of the military watches. We're using a PVD uh, case. Um, who's asking about that? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Eric. Yeah. Did you see the video, Eric, on how we're putting a military watch together? Hey, Nelson. Um, do you have the water resistant testing machine? <laughs> Yeah, it's because it's called my bathtub. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing that part of it. Um, you know, so, you know, that part, of it, well, I'm not going to worry. You know, we're going to do with it what we can. Remember, the, the, the thing is, is that if, you, if you're involved in this, you're, you're going, I hope, to, that, and and once I get all the parts, we can start. Now this is going to take a it takes about a month to get everything I need from China. I mean it, it is slow, uh, but you save a lot of money doing it that way. And I'm hoping that all of mine come together. I I got a uh, an email from um, uh, that place that we had looked at. What's that called? AliExpress, I think. And I said everything's been shipped. I just ordered it yesterday. So, um, you know, we, we may able, uh, may able to get a little sooner this time. Okay. Can you fire a shotgun first while wearing it? <laughs> fire a shotgun. I don't have a shotgun. I don't have any guns. I used to be a really good shot though. I have all, I got a whole bunch of medals from shooting from way back when, oh, that was a long time ago. Um, but I don't, I don't do that anymore. Um, it was it was too inexpensive, and so I took up watch collection. <laughs> okay, so uh, you know what can we learn from this? I mean, what can we learn from a couple different things? Is is one is that uh, people who make watches, but they're using other people's movements, and what kind of improvements can they make? Is there what kind of improvements could we make? For example. Uh, maybe we could figure out how to, one thing I was working on was how to, how would you enamel a dial? It's not that hard, I found out. Uh, so that might be sort of cool, having enamel dials or really good lacquer ones. What kind of lacquer is used on a, on a top-notch dial? Um, maybe we could even make our own hands. Ali especially said in the video, right, a subdivision of Alibaba. Okay, hey, Tom, thank you. I, I, I didn't, I, I, mm, that sounds right in, in the sense that I knew that, but I wasn't sure. So thank you for, you know, uh, verifying that. Okay, now let me see some more. Okay, we got, I'm going to check. How many of you have, uh, let's see, Tom, you're going to be involved. Who else is going to be involved in this? Tom, Nelson, was that thumbs up? I mean, you're going to be involved in the uh, project or just, hey, how's it going? How about in Jan, you are too, right? This, this, and this will work. Anyone else? Uh, Forrest, what are you going to do? You got a bunch of uh, watches. We need a military advisor, military watch advisor, Forrest. <laughs> you're going to be the guy. <laughs> Um, Nelson, you are okay. Good. Uh, Eric, silicon. Ah, I don't want to hear about silicon things. Should be considered de facto. No, they shouldn't. There's they they shouldn't be considered de facto, Eric. It, here's why. Okay, we're mechanical. We're into mechanical stuff. Um, I know Rolex is using a uh, silicon uh, hairspring. That's great. They, they're very accurate, but you want accuracy, get a quartz. This is not for accuracy. This is for, I don't know what you'd call it, art. This is art. This is for the artist in you, <laughs> okay? Um, Jan, you're going to be there. Good. Forrest, I want to <laughs> get an answer from you. <laughs> not an LOL. You're going to help us, right, I hope? Oh, good, Renee. Good. I'm glad you're going to be with us. It's still mechanical. How do you define mechanical? It's not made out of silicon. How's that, Eric? There's no silicon in it. <laughs> um, the um, Okay, great, Forrest. That's good to see. Eric, 
you, you, we're gonna we have to turn you back into a savage all right <laughs> we want a sa we want we want <laughs> sort of like um oh god it's, uh, i was gonna say, i was wondering if they were on the periodic table me uh, metals that we're using any any metal oh see the thing was with silicon i i worked for years with computers uh, and programming and so forth and I have nothing against silicon, nothing at all. I mean, it's great. It's just, it's just an amazing substance. But for this, I think looking at metals, one of the things, let me give you an example, Eric, of metal versus silicon. Um, when H. Moser was developing her own hairspring, they made it out of niobium and uh, titanium. And uh, niobium is very popular because it's used, it's, it's uh, non-magnetic. Uh, Rolex used niobium and zirconium, okay? And that was, I mean, and zirconium was the silicon base to it. So it's not, I mean, it, it's in there with niobium. So it's, I, I guess it's okay. So you have all of these these kinds of things okay um all right well let's see it looks like we're out of time guys but i'm really glad we had this talk and and i hope if if you're gonna if you're gonna join us get your stuff now the reason for that be to order it now because it's going to take about a month and let me see what is it uh, march 9th today so that'll be by around April 9th is when we're we're going to start this project, and um, we might wait until later to make sure that some stragglers come along. But at least we'll get started. What I like to start with is that once everybody has their movement, one of the things we can do that's sort of cool. Let me see if I can show you this real quick. Um, how many of you have? Uh, do you have a, a time grapher? A uh, time graphers cost, you can get one for about uh, 135 bucks, I think, uh, maybe less on uh, eBay. You can get a, uh, I think it's called Weezy, and uh, they're pretty pretty standard one. But one of the things you can do, that would be a nice way to start this off. Okay, now here's the movement. By the way, too, there's a little gear that comes with it that's, uh, that goes on top of here for that you need for the hour hand. Uh, so don't lose that when you get it. Now, what you can do, this right here has got, uh, the one I happen to have, comes with two <clears throat> hands that are on it, and they're sort of like demonstration hands, and you can wind up uh, the walk. But what you can do when it's in this plastic, you can put it on a time grapher. And then uh, once you do that, you can see whether it's running fast or slow. And right here, there's a little regulator pointer, and you can move that left and right. Renee dial washer. That's right. That is right. Uh, the dial washer and the, and the uh, gear. Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen. Um, tomorrow, I I really think you're gonna love uh, Tierney's collection. Really, a great collection. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Take care.